All right. The question is, think, think deeply. Okay. The question is, does the Olympics slash FIBA make the NBA more competitive or less competitive? Think is, of this one. I can repeat it if you want. Can I ask? A, can I just like ask a clarifying Absolutely. question? Is it like makes the competitive like when they're playing FIBA rules or when they're playing in the NBA? In the NBA. Okay. So does playing does the NBA sending players to play in the Olympics mm -hmm. and in FIBA does that actually make the NBA itself a more competitive league? What do um, you think? I'll let you answer that first, Antoine. I'll cook up something in about a minute or two. I just gotta, I gotta huh. rack some brain cells together right now. I have no idea if that benefits the NBA, because I feel like there's a there's a significant drop off drop off in teams that are good talent wise when you go play in the FIBA World Cup and you play in the Olympics. Besides Team USA, Spain, no, nah, I mean Serbia. There's good players on other teams that are like you know stars in the NBA, like you know, maybe like one or two on like smaller teams. Right. But uh, compared to NBA level teams, I would think they would probably beat them all. I could be right. completely wrong. I don't know. I don't know how good the other FIBA teams are. And um, the Olympic teams this year were pretty decent. But um, right. I don't know. I don't think it makes it. I think the NBA is the most competitive league in the world for basketball. Um, right. Right. I think nothing beats it talent wise right now. Every team has a, has a maybe one or two emerging stars that could be probably significantly all star, significant better players probably in like the Euro League, depending on like other factors. Mm -hmm. So I don't think it makes the NBA. I think the NBA. I don't think they, people can hear you. I think the <laughs> NBA like producing like their players and everything makes Olympics and FIBA because the majority of the players in those competitions are from the NBA. Okay. So the NBA is producing those <laughs> players that are going into play for, like, the good players. Like, there are some good international players that are going to star on their teams, but the majority of the players that are playing for, like, Canada, USA, mm -hmm. Serbia, uh, Spain, all of France are all NBA-born players, or NBA-bred right. players. Now, think of it. I want you to think of it from a very outside-the-box perspective because – the NBA NBA players going overseas now and they're playing in Olympic games, playing in FIBA games. There's now um, a heightened um, understanding or or a heightened you know just a heightened understanding of the of the game of basketball, right? So people, more people are seeing basketball and seeing these amazing athletes play. And so that being said, I think that the next generation of athletes that are watching these players play they may become inspired to play basketball. And so therefore that I think actually does impact the competitiveness of the NBA, if not now, but in the future. Do you see where I'm going with that? What do you think about that? So you're saying to people growing up watching them that want to play basketball, it helps. I mean, yes, of course. Right. Uh, I don't know. I feel like, it's kind of mixed. Um, so you, you're saying that the Olympics and FIBA benefit the NBA mm -hmm. competitively. Yeah. How so if it, they're completely different competitions? Right. Tyler, you want to weigh in on that? Yeah. yeah. Um, so I disagree. I don't think it makes the NBA more competitive at all. Yeah. Because, um, look, I mean, you see, like, look at the foul baiters, for example. You look at, like, an Embiid or... Or anyone that just sort of flops and tries to get like calls, like like let's say Trey Young played in the Olympics or whatever, they're not going to get the calls, right? So you'd think that means they'd start to play more like you know ethical, but no, because when you go back to the NBA, you're just going to do the same shit as before, and you're just going to adjust. You're not going to adjust any changes because you're only playing in FIBA for a few games compared to a full eighty-two game season. Right. Um, and look, at the end of the day, it's just like the NBA kind of abides by its own rules. Mm -hmm. um, everyone knows those rules. They grew up with those rules. I think the only thing that it does make it more competitive for is the players coming over from Europe. Because you look at a lot of the EuroLeague MVPs over the past few years, like Mike James, Sasha Vizankov, They The EuroLeague MVPs just cannot find their stride in the NBA because hmm. yeah. the game's totally different. 
Mm-hmm. That's not the style of basketball they're acclimated to. You only find these rare cases like a Giannis or a Jokic or a Wemby that mm-hmm. can just plug and play into any sort of rules or anything like that. And I think with, with the NBA, it doesn't make it any more competitive because I, I don't think the NBA's uh, the NBA is super talented right now. It's competitive enough as it is. Yeah. I don't think FIBA really does anything like that. Okay. I think it just kind of... New, it's just neutral. It's just very neutral. Because okay. when you go play FIBA, it it just... The U.S. dominates. It's kind of really what you expect. Maybe two or three countries will have a dogfight against each other. And then right. it's kind of that. Because right. once you go back to the NBA, it's just... You go back to your systems. No more, no more like crazy stacked teams or anything like that. And that's where you'll kind of see, like, you know, you'll see games like we saw last year. Remember that Celtics-Pistons game that kind of went down to the wire? Yeah. It really doesn't have an effect on FIBA or anything like that. I think the only effect it could have is maybe just on the players themselves because they're tired because they don't have a full Mm offseason. But as far as it goes, I don't really think FIBA does much. I think it just – FIBA brings out and emphasizes a lot of the wrongs in the NBA. Okay. Because the way they play in FIBA is just way more ethical than in in the NBA. The players are – not I, I don't want to say all of them are are soft, but it favors the player more. Whereas, like you know, they don't reward physicality. Yeah. Um, superstars get the calls; they get the benefit of the doubt and all that stuff. But in in FIBA, they don't give a shit. Hmm. It's just it is what it is. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of how I see it personally. Okay. Let me uh, let me go even further outside of the box. Okay. Uh, with that same question, I brought up this question because we see. Um, when American players go play for the Olympics, yeah, right. They we see <laughs> a lot of camarom, a camarom, Con- camaraderie, camaraderie. <laughs> camaraderie. There camaraderie. you go. Camaraderie. A lot of camaraderie between the the teammates, right? English so, Geo. Yeah. So now, um, you know, players start you know developing closer relationships with each other, which could potentially lead to them teaming up in the NBA. Right. So mm-hmm. now think of it from that perspective. Like, um, in in the 2008 Olympics, we saw. Wade and Braun team up and they're like, okay, we like to play with each other. Let's actually go play with each other in Miami in like two years from now, right. you know? So like stuff like that, or even, um, I, I, I heard this podcast, I forgot, who, I forgot which podcast it was where, um, LeBron James and everyone else on the team for the Olympics, I think in 2012, mm-hmm. encouraged James Harden to actually leave the thunder. Yeah. They're like, you bro, you are a good player. You should leave the thunder. <laughs> And, that, and he ended up leaving. Right. So, like, there's a lot of influence when all these great players come together. So, in that way, look mm-hmm. at it in that way, could that make the NBA more competitive or less competitive? I think you answered it for yourself in mm-hmm. the sense that I think for the player, it just gives them better opportunities. Okay. But those opportunities can bring down competitiveness. It can also raise competitiveness. Because, right. right, like, the, the big three forming in Miami, like, that's not going to make anything competitive. They're just right. going to dominate. So, and I, I know they lost two finals, but like, you know, you can't predict that at the time, but I guess there could be certain circumstances where it would kind of raise the competitiveness, but I still just can't really see it as far as the camaraderie goes. Cause it's just about teaming up. Right. And then once you team up, competitiveness is just going to decrease because there's no one on the level of these super teams as mm-hmm. far as everything goes. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I don't know. I don't really... I don't think it changes much, if I'm being honest with you. I think FIBA is just something different for athletes to just go and go try and do. It's basically just an all-star game with with trying because that's essentially what it is. Mm -hmm. I think if the rosters weren't so ungodly stacked, I think it would be a lot more competitive as far as FIBA goes. But, you know, I could see some parts of it. Like we saw last year during the World Cup when Mikael Bridges played with Jalen Brunson, and then that made Nets-Knicks games kind of more competitive between them personally, mm-hmm. but not mm-hmm. really the teams. Mm-hmm. So I can't really see it as much 